Hello viewers and welcome to the Good Form Hunter Cup preview. We could go through every race in the program, but we won't. We'll just go through the quaddy legs here. Four key races, including the Australian Trotting Grand Prix, the four-year-old Bonanza, and also the Hunter Cup. A big welcome to you, Blake Redden. Now, I know we'll disagree. We normally do on these sort of things, but um, wonderful program ahead. Great way to peak your Summer of Glory Carnival. Yeah, can't wait. It's going to be a great Hunter Cup night. The last ever standing start Hunter Cup. It's going to be an amazing spectacle. And, of course, that quaddy that we're going to speak about a big $300,000 pool guarantee and I think there's a little bit of sugar for the jackpot punters as well maybe 50000 in there as well and you can play wide no doubt about it we should start at the start race 5 the sea light windows and doors Australian trotting Grand Prix this is an unbelievably strong race I know there's only 8 horses engaged but all the big guns are here maybe we're missing a master Lavros from New Zealand but all the rest are here uh, Mon Bay is a very short price favourite I think he's been backed all the way into a dollar fifty with TAB is he immoral? I don't think he's immoral. He was breathtaking at Ballarat, his first Australian start. He had the wraps coming over. He won the trotting championship so impressively. So he is the best horse in the race, but he has to do it from probably having to park. He's got good speed, but I'm not sure he'll lead from that position with so many talented horses. I think it makes it a bit tougher. And who do we put in the quarter here? This is what we need for this big jackpot quarter. Are we going to go stagger it up, one with just Mon Bay, or are we going to try and play wide, hope to get Mon Bay rolled, and we know we're going to have some value? So I think you have to play wide. I think Glen Ferry Typhoon from the pole has all the advantages. He can lead or trail. Keystone Dell's a forgotten horse for mine. He's really good at his best, obviously. He's a champion. I think it's Shepard, and he wasn't quite at his top. He'll be better here. Mon Bay has to go in. The one I'm leaving out, but I'm really scared of, is Kai Valley Blur. I think you'll be throwing him in. Um, he's drawn right behind Glen Ferry Typhoon. It has to be a massive chance. Yeah, look, I'm going to throw four in. I'm not going to stag in my quaddies. I think that we can get Mon Bay rolled. Look, it'll be a wonderful sight at Tabcourt Park if he's able to just go up, breeze and dominate this field. It's going to be bad news for the rest, but I'm happy to include Glenferry Typhoon, who I really think has gone from being a very, very good horse to a superstar in the last few weeks. Uh, Mon Bay obviously goes in. I'm with you, Keystone Dell. It wasn't even a bad run on the George Gath. It was a good run. He was in the breeze. They ran spectacular time, so he has to go in. And you're right, I am including Kai Valley Blur. I think if he's behind the leader, he's got every opportunity. We know how fast he is over a 400 metre burst. Tough to leave horses like Arbo and Speeding Spur out, but that's just how high a quality race this is. The second leg of the quaddy is an intriguing event, perhaps the most intriguing event of the night. It's the Nestle Professional four-year-old Bonanza Group 1 level. Great mix of established stars and those on the way up, Blake. Are you going with the established power of a horse like It's Better to Win? Or the, the on the way up horses like uh, tack tape, fake smile and coat. No, I'm with it's better to win, not overly confident. I think maybe you split your quarters and you do play him one out and one, but I'm certainly playing wider through others. I think he's the best horse in the race. I mean, he's won a Group 2 open age race in New Zealand, the Franklin Cup. He's come over to Australia. His first second was in 151.6 sitting parked. No horse has really ever done that at Tabcourt Park, Melton, or at least not for a few years. Uh, he went on to run second to Yankee Rockstar, who's in a Hunter Cup. I think he has the right form lines, but as you said, there's just so many stars drawn all across the race that it's hard to say he's a moral or he'll definitely win. I think TCB McRae is the rising star of the field. He's drawn the pole, showed a lot more speed last time. If he gets out quickly, then he's going to be right in the mix. Uh, there are others you can throw in. I mean, Fake Smile's on the rise. He's unbeaten. Hard to know exactly where his level is. Tactate, lots of speed. And off the back row, I think the culture is again going to be the forgotten horse. He did run that 151.6 at Melton last time. Admittedly, from the front, he won't have that favour here, but I still think he can run a place. So two quick questions. How's the race going to play out from a speed map perspective? and who can we can because we need to put a line through a few of these to try and make sure we can get a good percentage of the quality so what are the ones we can put a line through I think you can drop Wingara as good as he is Mr Wickham similar story from out wide and then Ego Dan and we're going to disagree I'd leave out my Kiwi mate he was good first up from a break uh, he can win the race but he's the other that I think we have to leave out to try and get some value speed map is really interesting Tactate's obviously got natural speed whether he can cross a horse like TCB McRae who has never really been fired out before for last time, I guess time will tell. I do think it's better to win, can probably bully his way to the front at some point though. Uh, look, I'm just going to play the four horses here because I think you can get caught up in uh, then adding one or two here and all of a sudden you've got three quarters of the field. So you've opted to stagger it up a little bit with it's better to win at the head of affairs. I think he's a really, really good horse. He's had two very tough runs in Australia, sitting parked, as you mentioned, outside the culture first up and then having to lead up. And I think he was a shade below that first up run when beaten by Yankee Rockstar, who just went out of this world last weekend. So the four horses I'm throwing in, one TCB McRae, who I think could be 
anything. He's going to need to be used up a little bit at the start. He has been a horse who's been both a little ill-gated at times and can knock off in front, but he's such a high-quality progressive horse. I think he has to go in. Tactate, I'm very excited by. Very interested to see the tactics on this horse, but I think he can ping them at the start, and if he does, he'll have an option to hand up to a horse like It's Better to Win, and he'll have every opportunity to use his devastating late speed in that role. It's Better to Win obviously goes in. Mark Purden has to be um, has to be trusted to bring his performances, his horse's best performances out on the big days, and I think It's Better to Win has to go in, even though I do have those little caveats against him. And my Kiwi mate's the forgotten horse. Third in the Breeders' Crown, unbelievable up there during the winter uh, last season in Queensland. So I definitely want to be throwing him in as well. One, four, five, and 11. Happy to risk and the poor, rest. Poor old burn a hole in my pocket. He's done nothing wrong. He's just drawn a bit awkwardly. Yeah. It may not work out for him. Yeah, I, he, he's going to get buried. He's probably going to have to get off at some stage. He'll need to be a lot better than them to win. Yep. He might be. I'm willing to risk him on this program. Race seven on the program, the third leg of the quarter. He has a group three in status, but more like a group one or two in nature because these are the best mares we've got going around. Unfortunately, Nike Franco, the group one mares classic winner, over there at Gloucester Park during their Inter-Dominion Carnival. Won't turn up a late scratching, but it's still a really, really good race. Difficult one to sort out, Blake. Speed map, first of all. What, how's it going to play out? And who do you like? Yeah, it's really interesting speed map because I think the good time's drawn too. She hasn't been at her best for quite a while, but she does have gate speed, and there's every chance she'll get across Millie Perez and want to hand up. Now, who's the first horse there? I get the sneaking suspicion if Josh Aiken's awake to this and beat Shaq Fires out, she could find the front, and she's going to be 20 to 1. Uh, on that basis, I'm happy to back her each way, but there are other options. Better down under, a horse who's never really had to be used off the gate and can do things wrong, may be able to get out quickly here. Better be cool, be firing forward from out wide. So I think the speed map's a little unclear. It's a little confusing. For that reason, I'm happy just to back beat Shaq each way. I think Better Be Cool's probably the best horse in the race. We know the team have a big opinion of her. She's come through her grades quickly. Uh, this does look sort of her race at least to be in. And I think Sophie's ideal one you like. She's been underrated by the market early doors, starting to firm in now. But her high speed, geez, it's, it's quick when she gets going. Yeah, look, I think it's a really, really tough race. Another one we have to play wide, but this is a great opportunity to get a big quaddy. We had uh, a less than big quaddy, it'd have to be said, last Saturday night, around $4.40. That won't be happening on Hunter Cup night. These are really tough races, and there's going to be some value somewhere along the line. For the value, I'm going with number nine, Sophie's Ideal. To be honest, I'm not wrapped with the scratching of Nike Franco because uh, she would have added some mid-race pressure, but better down under is a horse who really only knows one way, likes to try and find the lead or the breeze and really run along. Better be cool, we'll be happy to go forward and put some pressure on. Steam Washed is another horse, a Group 1 winner, who likes it when it's turned into a staying test. And even if Ferrisari can get off the inside early, uh, she'll be looking to get into the race as well. So I don't think this will be one of those pedestrian mares features where they go 156 and the leaders dominate. Sophie's Ideal should get her opportunity. So I've got her on top. It was $21 with TAB earlier in the week. All the way into probably about 8 or 9 now with the scratching of Nike Franco. But I'd be including heaps for your quaddy. Millie Perez is not really one of mine, but gets the ideal draw here and will have no excuses. Uh, better down under is very progressive. First up from a break, trialled really well at Tabcourt Park recently. Better be cool, we've already waxed lyrical about her. Berisari, I think she could still be the best mare in Australia. Sophie's ideal, and even Steamwash. She's a former Group 1 winner, and I didn't think she was too bad on Ballarat Cup night in a race she was unsuited to. So playing very, very wide and leaving out Baker's top tip beat Shaq. So one of us is going to end up happy and one of us potentially not after the Ladyship Cup. Now it's the big one. The Delray National AG Hunter Cup at Group 1 level. Look, originally when I saw this field, I thought there's probably only two or three winning hopes. I've sort of mellowed on that. I think there's probably six or seven winning hopes, but I'm still super keen on Smolder. Which way are you heading? Yeah, I'm really confused by the race. I think Smolder's the best horse in the race, and that's obvious. Uh, but I don't think he's unbeatable. I think there are a number of chances to beat him. Obviously, Hoka Punt has been in stunning form since he's come to Victoria. Of course, the first time since he won a Victoria Derby here. Um, he has to go in. The start will be important, the last ever standing start. I'm not sure it's that clear that he leads. I think Yankee Rockstar got out a lot better at Shepparton when he stepped well. Uh, Franco Ledger can step well. Messini can step well. Smolder will probably just step with them and try and bully his way forward. Flaming Flutter can begin very quickly from out wide. So for that reason, I think anything can happen at the start. I'm going to throw my hands up in the air here and just back a couple each way. It is Billy at 
$51. He was huge in the Victoria Cup, made good late ground, and this might be a bit more suitable. And Five Star Anvil, he's the underrated horse to the field. He's been low flying. He'll always be hitting the line hardest, and if they do go quickly up front, he's the one I want to be on each way. Here's a scenario I've got for you. Messini began more quickly than Ohoka Punter in the New Zealand Cup. Smolder began badly on that occasion, but that was really um, one out of the box. He normally begins reasonably safely from the strands. If Messini was to find the front, yep. would he hand up nope. to Ohoka Punter? Nah, Messini tries to lead all the way. He wouldn't even hand up to Smolder. Okay. I think his run in the Victoria Cup was good enough. He was making late ground without a whole lot of luck. He's a tough horse. It is two miles, but I'd be inclined if I was the connections of Messini to try and lead all the way. Well, I'll leave it to, uh, to Baker here to try and be the hero. He's found a couple of for us at 50 or 100 to 1 so if they get up or if they even run a place you're going to be well well ahead based on his tips I'm just going to play a straight bat here I've already spoken about how I think uh, Smolder's the best horse in the race he hasn't been beaten by any any of these horses through the New Zealand um, feature season in a standing start um, free for all where they've been on level mark so I just think he's got something on these he might not be quite the level of Lenny the Shark at his best or have faith in me but I think he's better than these and regardless of where he settles in transit so long as he doesn't complete completely obliterate the standing start. I think he will win, but these are the other ones I want to include in Saver Quaddies. So first of all, your main Quaddy, Smolder one out, then Ahoka Punter and Messini. Um, both have been in terrific form recently. Messini was wonderful in the Victoria Cup last week and ran some great races in New Zealand, including that second place behind Arden Rudy in the Kaikoura Cup. And then the other ones for a third tier Quaddy for a small percentage, one Franco Ledger, uh, two Yankee Rockstar, eight my hard copy who Gary Hall Senior is very, very happy with this week, and nine Mostel Connor. So, as I mentioned, no one or two horse race the Hunter Cup. I think five or six can win. Who's your best on the program? Uh, race four, number seven, Baramar. I think he gets back into a much more suitable race. They'll run the whole way. He'll just drag back at the start, use his big turn of foot. I think he'll go very close at $5. Yours? Yours? I'm going to stick with Smolder uh, at around $3. I've got some roughies there um, on good form that um, I think can certainly be in the mix. Metro Mike's one of them at $5, so I'm, I'm taking you on head-to-head -head there. More importantly, though, with this big jackpot quaddy available, $300,000 pool guarantee, we can carve them up on the night for those listening to our tips, but can we just give them one quaddy, one way to try and make some money out of this big jackpot? I think it's very wide. I think there's about 700 combinations here, so you'll have to play for a small percentage. Going 1, 3, and 4 in the first league, Glen Ferry Typhoon, Keystone Dallin, also Mon Bay, second league, playing even wider. One TCB McRae, three Fake Smile, four Tactate, five It's Better to Win, eight Burn a Hole in My Pocket, nine The Culture. I'm going to leave out my Kiwi mate. Third leg, again, really wide, six Better Be Cool, um, but also throwing numbers one Millie Perez, three Beat Shack, five Better Down Under, eight Berisari, and also number nine Sophie's Ideal. And in the last leg, Really, really tough Hunter Cup. Of course the favourites go in, but throw in Franco Ledger number one, two Yankee Rockstar, three Ahoka Punter, four It Is Billy, five Smolder, six Messini, then off the back row, nine Mostel Connor, and also 11 Five Star Anvil. Really tough, Cordy. How are you playing? Uh, I'll skinny it up. So this will, this will be good for the punters. You can take the wide one or a slightly skinny and more aggressive one from me. I'm playing one more horse than Blake in the first league, one, three, four, and eight. So I'm including Kai Valley Blur in with the other big guns. I think if it gets that uh, behind leader trail, then it's going to be very dangerous in the final 100 metres. In the four-year-old Bonanza, as I mentioned earlier, I think I just need to say, here are the four horses that I want to play. You get rolled here. Well, hopefully you're still in Baker Squatty. TCB McRae, number one. Tac Tate. Um, it's better to win, obviously, and my Kiwi mate all go in 1, 4, 5, and 11. Playing even wider in the Ladyship Cup, Millie Perez, number one. Five better down under. Six better be cool. Eight Berisari. Nine Sophie's Ideal and the underrated 11 Steamwashed all go in. And then just one out with Smolder in the Hunter Cup. And what you do with mine is you, you lay off. If you think you're gonna get a reasonable dividend, it's only $96 for 100 bucks for my quaddy. And if you think you're gonna get a reasonable dividend going in, maybe lay off on horses like a Hoka Punter and Messini primarily, and then three or four others if you're looking at a really good dividend. If we've got Mon Bay rolled and maybe Steamwash got up in the Ladyship Cup. Thanks very much for joining us, Blake. This has been uh, the first of the, the good form previews and what a great night to start it with uh, the second night of the Summer of Glory Carnival coming up. Good punting. Yep, and don't forget, jump on to trotstipoff.com.au. Sign up there. $12,000 worth of prizes. Prizes every week. Put your tips in and try and beat me and Jace.